All right, everyone, Jammer here from Jammer's Wrestling Magazine Collection. And today, I'm going to do a special video. I'm going to do a video on the year 1993. And I want to talk about uh, the WWF, WCW, ECW, whatever comes up in 1993. Because, as you know, I love that era. I love the new generation for WWF. WCW was doing pretty good there. You had Vader, Sting, the Hollywood Blondes. You know, Barry Windham was NWA champion. ECW in April was just starting to get TV and get going. So let's take a look. And first of all, we'll start off with January. And I'm not going to go through these magazines because it's going to take too long. And I just know that. So I'll, I'll try to do my best here. We got Ric Flair as new WWF world champion. But... The inside, the poster, is of Jeff Jarrett. So, USWA's Jeff Jarrett makes the poster. And we get Ric Flair on the cover there. Four, the wrestler in January 93. We get Sting turns sadistic, hurting Jake, makes me happy. So, yeah, we get WCW on the cover here. Um, you know, at the time, Sting was feuding with Jake, going into the Halloween Havoc in 92 with the... Uh, Spin the wheel, make the deal. So that's kind of neat to see uh, that happen. That made the cover there. That was kind of a big deal. Uh, for Inside Wrestling, we get pretty much, you know, the SummerSlam results. And the cool thing about this was, I will show this, they do give you the color photos in here. You know, I, I, do, I do dig that. And these matches weren't even on the pay-per-view. These were like the dark matches. But they show you uh, everything that took place here that night. So, and plus they give you a look, a colored look at the Clash of the Champions. 20, there's Andre the Giant's last North American televised uh, appearance with Bruno San Martino, Dusty Rhodes, and Doug Dillinger. Yeah, so that's kind of neat, right? There we go. Next up is Wrestle America. And again, they're highlighting um, SummerSlam as well. Uh, we got some, there's a poster of Cactus Jack. We got Paul Bear, Rick Steiner, and Greg the Hammer Valentine, Bob Backlund. The Junkyard Dog, and Tatanka. We also have for January, Wrestling Superstars with The Undertaker on the cover. So, uh, there, you know, he was just, he kind of getting, uh, he was feuding with uh, who, Kamala at the time? Yeah, Kamala. Got some old uh, wrestling events in here they're showing off, which is always nice to see some color photos in these books, right? Ah, January 93 also gives us this. The Undertaker and Nails on the WWF magazine. Of course, Nails just, you know, getting let go, getting into that fight with Vince McMahon. He got fired. Undertaker and Nails feud match never happened. But what if, right? What if? On to February. We got... Savage couldn't do it. Undertaker won't do it. Hart can't do it. No one can cut down Razor Ramon. That's not Razor Ramon. That's the Diamond Stud from WCW. Um, they actually, let's see. Well, there's a picture of Kurt Henning in here. So that's all right. Uh, do they, they show a picture of... Uh, of, of uh, do they show Razor in here? Let's see. Oh, right there. So there is pictures of Razor Ramon. They couldn't find that for the cover though. They they went with uh, went with uh, the Diamond Stud. Ah, February ninety three of the Wrestler. Now we have Bret Hart as WF Champion on the cover. So Ric Flair 
in the January PWI 93. Now we got Brett and the wrestler, February 93. Uh, Bret Hart's five most uh, dangerous of challengers, The Undertaker, Davey Boy Smith, Razor Ramon, Terry Taylor, and Ric Flair. Terry Taylor, really? Terrific ter- Terry Taylor? No, no. I'm sorry, no. I, I don't believe that. Inside wrestling, we got a holidays wish list here. So they went through and just kind of said what wrestlers would like to have. So that's pretty cool. The wish lists are always fun to look through and read. We got for Wrestle America. Can the WWF withstand the real Bam Bam Bigelow? Well, I don't know. You tell me. This is February 93, and that picture there is from, what, maybe February 88, when Bam Bam Bigelow was in the WWF, WWF then with Hulk Hogan and feuding with Ted DiBiase and Andre the Giant. I mean, come on. A uh, photo of Jake the Snake Roberts, though. Um, where's the other photos in here? Oh, there we go. We got Nikita Koloff, Repo Man and Crush, The Demolition, <laughs> Razor Ramon, Jeff Jarrett. So, that's neat. Um, now, we go into this. February. Mr. Perfect on the cover. So, he made the cover of the WWF magazine here. So that's pretty sweet. Mr. Mr. Perfect had just returned, tagging with Randy Savage to feud with Razor Ramon and Ric Flair. So that was pretty sweet. March 93. We got the year in review for PWI. I'll go through and show you who won the awards at least. Eric Watts won Rookie of the Year. Ron Simmons won Inspirational Wrestler of the Year. Razor Ramon won Most Improved Wrestler of the Year. Comeback of the Year went to the Ultimate Warrior. So there goes my, uh, my, my, uh, what do you want to call it? I was wrong. Well, I'll just say that. I was wrong. I said 1994, I thought was the first time that happened with Hogan won it. Apparently 92 when Warrior won it was the first comeback of the year. Uh, Polly Dangerously was Manager of the Year. Uh, the Moon Dogs against Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler was feud of the year sting was most popular wrestler of the year ravishing rick rude without a mustache was most hated wrestler of the year bret hart and the and the british bulldog was uh, match of the year doc and gordy were tag team of the year and rick flair was wrestler of the year so there's the pwi awards there uh march for the wrestler had the 1992, the year in pictures. And uh, yeah, they are in here. The wrestler, once again, doing a colored photo spread here. They rarely do it, but when they do it, they do it well, showing off uh, what happened in the year of 1992. In all the federations, WWF, WCW, New Japan, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, it all got covered here, USWA, anything big that happened in those organizations they covered it here so and they have predictions so that's kind of neat uh inside wrestling march 93 who controls the balance of power in the wwf is it bret hart randy savage rick flair razor ramon mr perfect Shawn michaels bobby heenan or vince mcmahon well there we go. And who's to blame for the Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham breakup? So that's a pretty good magazine right there. A lot of, a lot of top names on that cover. For March 93 of Wrestle America, I wish I would have known this magazine existed when I did my women's wrestling magazine cover. Because I didn't know Medusa made the cover of this. I didn't have the Wrestle America magazines when I was a kid. I'm not familiar with them. So I wish I would have added this to that video, but here it is now. Medusa's on the cover. Picture of the Steiner brothers here. Picture of Jesse Ventura. A calendar for the year. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. And the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony from Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Um, 
Wrestling Superstar of March is Bret Hart versus Ron Simmons, the Superstar Dream Match. There's nothing really in this to see. Uh, they just talk about the Dream Match, but there it is. And for Wrestling, a 93 Rule Breaker, we finally come in. Since this is uh, spring, we get the Lex Luger story that for the narcissist Lex Luger is in WWF with Bobby the Brain Heenan. And uh, they talk about that. I showed you this before with the posters, so I don't need to go through that again. But yes, that that is now into play here for 1993. And March of 93 for the WWF. We got the bad guy, Razor Ramon, on the cover. He's getting ready to wrestle Bret Hart at the Royal Rumble for the WWF title. So there it is. April. We got the Steiner Brothers for PWI. And I had this magazine as a kid. It was a really good magazine. They actually, uh, they actually, there's a, first of all, Barry Windham is the, uh, is the poster. But for the, the Steiner Brothers thing, they give you like this amazing, like title victories and super card uh, results, uh, quiz, you know, photos, everything. It's really cool. Really cool magazine if you like the Steiner Brothers. For the wrestler, we got what's in and what's out, the official list. In is Bret Hart and out is Hulk Hogan. Fair enough. Someone please tell Vince McMahon that because things are about to change in the next few issues. Uh, inside wrestling for April 93, we got New Blood. We got in the WF, we got Elegante, the Steiners, Yokozuna, and Lex Luger. Of course, Elegante would become the Giant Gonzalez. Up here, we got. Polly Dangerously, I want you for the Dangerous Alliance. Well, the Dangerous Alliance wasn't in WCW then, Paul. We had to wait to see you in ECW in a few months. Next up, Russell America. Overwhelmed by savage intensity, the Macho Man needs a break. So there we go. An interesting story here, Rick Steamboat and Shane Douglas, because I'm a huge fan of them. I want to show that. Um, let's see. There it is. Rick Steamboat and Shane Douglas. It's not their fault that they're champions by default. Ouch. Though I liked them as champions. They had good matches with the Hollywood Blondes or with Barry Windham and Brian Pillman or with Steve Austin and Bobby Eaton or with even Rick Rude and Big Van Vader. They, they did all right. I liked it. Um, up next, we have... April of 93 with Yokozuna on the cover for the WWF magazine. We get the Royal Rumble exclusive coverage and WrestleMania 9 official inside preview. Yoko won the Rumble. We knew he was going to Mania to wrestle Bret Hart for the title, so that was exciting. And PWI knew it too because they hinted right here with Yoko and Bret on the cover and WrestleMania without Hulk Hogan. Who needs them? Well, the WWF did because Vince made sure to bring back Hogan for that. We'll get into that later on. There's an interesting one. Medusa and Sherry are supposed to wrestle each other in ECW. It never happened. Medusa signed with the WWF to become a Lundra Blaze. There's a close-up on The Undertaker and The Undertaker poster. So, you know, there we go for that. The wrestler has Yokozuna on the cover. Of course, Yokozuna winning the Rumble, getting ready to go to WrestleMania. He was uh, talked about a lot in the next little while. And so much that in Inside Wrestling for May, we get exclusive WrestleMania 9 match analysis with Bret Hart and Yokozuna, as well as Perfect and Luger, Gonzalez and Undertaker, Steiners and Head Shrinkers. Yeah, they knew the match lineup, and it was all in here. And plus a tribute to Andre the Giant. Because Andre had passed away. So that's pretty cool that they would do that. May of 93 gives us Russell America. We got Doink the Clown on the cover here. Because Doink was in a feud with Crush. We get uh, no poster here. So they're cutting down the posters even in this now. We get Hulk Hogan though. And a sweet data bank photo of Barry Windham. We get Brian Christopher and Jeff Jarrett from the USWA. And to Cold Scorpio from WCW. And that's it now. No more posters on the back either. They're really cutting those out. Um, next up is 
June. But first, we're going to get to June. we got to get to May with this picture, this one. Uh, Hulk Hogan's on the cover of May. He's back with a vengeance and with a heart, meaning Bret Hart probably. <laughs> but yeah, the Hulkster was back. Vince McMahon was clearly happy about it. But PWI didn't talk about that yet for June because in June they talk about Ric Flair's hellish homecoming because Nature Boy's back in WCW now. He's He came back at Super Brawl. You know, he's going after the NWA title of Barry Windham. But here the cover photo we got. Or Razor Ramon for the poster. Sorry, the close-up of a razor there. And, the, yeah. So there, Razor Ramon's in that one. And we got Flair, his WCW run there. Uh, June of 93. Hulk Hogan, I could beat Bret Hart with my eyes closed. Well, Hulkster, you tried. You tried to beat him in, in different ways, didn't you? Uh... June of 93, we also get in WCW on the cover here for Inside Wrestling. Sting Invader, Secret Blood Pact has gone too far. That's their Super Brawl 3 strap match they had with each other. Man, that was a great match. Uh, if you haven't seen it, check it out on the WWE Network. It's really fun. It was the White Castle of Fear match, right? That ridiculous thing. Um, That would be... June and in June here we have wrestling superstars with Missy Hyatt and Ric Flair so they make the cover here and of course there's uh, again there's colored photos in here of things so that's pretty sweet that wrestling su superstars always gave us the color photos inside which was nice uh, June also gave us for the WWF Oh, I'm sorry. I missed Wrestle America here. Before I get to the WF, I'll get to Wrestle America. We got Hogan on the cover. The 10 steps Hogan must take to make Hulkamania rule again. And we get posters of Woman. Mr. Wonderful Paul Ondorf and Cactus Jack from Super Brawl 3, their Falls Count Anywhere crazy match they had, and Doink the Clown. Now, it's funny because Hogan's on the cover here for Wrestle America for June. In June of 93 for the WWF magazine, we get Hulk Hogan wins the gold in WrestleMania. Shocker. Hulkamania rules for the fifth time. Ouch. Now, on a side note here, um, Vince McMahon, you can run two shows a night. On one show, you could have Bret Hart and Yokozuna for the WWF title. On the other show, you could have Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake against Money Incorporated for the tag titles. Two main event matches, but no. You got to give the belt to Hogan because that's what you think fans want in 93 when fans had already chosen Brett Hitman Hart as their guy. Hogan was out in 93. Let's be honest, he was. July 93, for Pro Wrestling Illustrated, we get Hulk Hogan, don't jerk us around. And uh, are you here? Are you back or not? Well, he was back for a short time. Um, we got a ooh, champ. WF champion Bret Hart doesn't take any challenge lying down. So Bret, they, they're still saying that Hogan wasn't even champion here yet. So PWI was a little bit behind here. Uh, David Boy Smith was the uh, centerfold, though, which was nice. Um, which brings me then to this, because they got it right here for summer of 93. Wrestling 93, Hulk Hogan's fifth title reign, a black eye for wrestling. So they got the cover shot here for that one. They didn't get it for the PWI, so it's right there. So it did make it. Uh, July of 93 for the wrestler. We have the total package. Le no, that's the narcissist Lex Luger. There it is. Lex Luger here on the cover. Um, you know, he... Uh, Came in with Bobby the Brain Heenan, and he ended up feuding with Mr. Perfect, knocking people out with that bionic forearm. But yes, Lex Luger made the cover here for July 93. Next up is Inside Wrestling. July 93. Is... The British Bulldog, David Boy Smith. He made the cover uh, talking about um, 
going to WCW. He's there now. He's wrestling. He wants to wrestle Big Van Vader for the WCW title. Uh, so, you know, the Bulldog is now there in WCW. Now I just have to find something here, folks. Hold on. Uh, there it is. Okay. Oh, I'm back here. I had to find, I was looking for a magazine. I just remembered where it was. I wanted to get it now. But now we got July, right? We got July of Russell America. We got Hulk Hogan on the cover, five-time champ. So they're talking about it now, beating Yokozuna at WrestleMania. We get posters in here of Brian Pillman. Uh, Doink and Doink and Crush at WrestleMania. And Giant Gonzalez and Harvey Whippleman. So, yeah, they're talking about Hogan being champion there. They're talking about him, you know, uh, I guess everywhere right now. Hulk Hogan's the talk of wrestling because of how he won the belt. And um, fans weren't weren't really happy about it, let's be honest. Um, we also have now July 93. The Undertaker on the cover of the WWF magazine. And they're hyping here Hogan versus Hart. And the reason why is because there was talk of Hogan versus Hart at SummerSlam. That Hogan would keep the belt and drop the belt back to Brett at SummerSlam, and it never happened. Right? Hogan dropped the belt to Yokozuna at King of the Ring, and Brett wouldn't see the title until WrestleMania 10. So that did not happen. August 93 is this magazine. I showed this in the Super Cards one. And uh, the centerfold, though, for this one is, and I probably showed it in the other one, but I'll show it again, Shawn Michaels. And it's actually coming out, but I still have it at least. But at least, uh, you know, I don't care if it falls out as long as it's still in the magazine. The Wrestler for August 93. Hulk Hogan, he won it, but can he defend it? Man, they're already, they're already coming down on Hogan. And Barry Windham's NWA, no wimps allowed. Barry, of course, being the NWA world champion at the time. Uh, inside wrestling for August 93, Hulk Hogan versus Yokozuna, the hoaxer faces his biggest challenge ever. Man, even the wrestling magazines here were not giving Hogan a chance, eh? Everyone knew. he was. It was a ridiculous win. I was 12 years old at the time, and even I thought the whole thing was just ridiculous. Like, why why give Hulk Hogan the title when when, uh, when Bret Hart was the guy we all chose at that time? August 93 for Russell America has Sting on it. I had this magazine as a kid. I really like this one. Um, it's got posters in here of Lex Luger. In his WCW days, Papa Shango and Jerry the King Lawler with a bit of fire there, and the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith. So, this magazine was fun. I like this one a lot. Um, it actually has, let me show you here if I can find it. Um, let's see here, where is it at? Jesus. Oh, right here. A story on Sabu and the Lightning Kid and Hawk and, and Terry Funk. And this is the match where that people really noticed uh, the Lightning Kid. He ended up getting busted open in this uh, match too with Sabu, right? He's all bloody here, as you can see. So Terry Funk's bloody with Hawk too. But yeah, that was the match that got the Lightning Kid noticed, got him into the uh, WWF as the 1 2 3 Kid. Um, up next for August, we got Wrestling Superstars. This gives an all-in-depth analysis of the sports top 20 stars. Let's see who the first star is. I'm curious uh, who they're going with here. Well, now this is right here. Bret Hart. 
So Bret Hart got first, then it was Kurt Henning, Rick Rude, Sting, Ric Flair, Barry Windham, Rick Steamboat, Shawn Michaels, Lex Luger, Bobby Eaton, Big Van Vader, Jushin Liger, Davey Boy Smith, The Great Muda, The Undertaker, Jerry Lawler, Dustin Rhodes, Tatanka, Yokozuna, and the Dirty White Boy, Tony Anthony. Tony Anthony making number 20. And nothing against Tony Anthony, but that's... I didn't think that would be possible in an era with all that, you know, WWF and WCW. But I guess Smoky Mountain Wrestling was big at the time. I'll be honest, it was, but oh well. Um, we now go with August 93. For the WWF magazine, we got Bret Hart on the cover giving Papa Shango the sharpshooter. Bret Hart, could he beat Hulk? They're talking about it. Couldn't he beat the Hulkster? They're still talking about this. Amazing, incredible. They really must have thought they were gonna go that route. There's no there's no ands, ifs, or buts about it if they keep talking about it like that. Uh let's see here. September ninety-three. I had this magazine as a kid, the Superstar Summit, Sting and Hulkster shaking hands on the cover of the Pro Wrestling Illustrated. What is this, right? Well, let's take a look. So I'm curious too. What is going on? Oh, there's a nice poster, the Hollywood Blondes, but um, let's see. Well, first of all, we got a poster here on uh, Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful. That's nice to see. Uh, we got uh, USWA stuff here with Lawler and Papa Shango. Sting and Hogan said it. PWI reveals it. That's when they were wrestling in Japan together. Sting wrestled Scott Norton, and Hulk Hogan wrestled the Great Muda. So that's how that happened. They were both on the same show. That makes a little sense. I get it now. Sorry if I keep putting my arm in front of that camera. It's just the PWI is over there, and it's just I have to throw the magazine over there. So, yeah. Um, up next. The Wrestler. I had this magazine as a kid, too. Sid Vicious will double-cross Big Van Vader. But, interesting thing here. The Dangerous Alliance is back and ready to self-destruct. Let's take a look at that, shall we? For that would be a different Dangerous Alliance altogether. Uh, that would be... I can find it here. Let me just take a look here. Okay. The ECW version. That's got Jimmy Snuka, Magnificent Morocco, Eddie Gilbert, and the Dark Patriot. So that's the Polly Dangerously now is an ECW um, doing his gimmick there at the Dangerous Alliance. And, uh, you know, it didn't last. It didn't last. I think it lasted, uh, Eddie Gilbert left in September, maybe, of 93. Him and, and Dark Patriot left, at, that being his brother, Doug Gilbert. And then it just fell apart. Inside Wrestling for September 93 gives us Razor Ramon on the cover. Can he cut it as a fan favorite? That's right. The bad guy, Razor Ramon, is now a good guy in the WWF. He lost to the uh, the, the one two three kid. Uh, he ends up feuding with Money Incorporated, defeating Ted DiBiase at SummerSlam, and then winning the Intercontinental title and feuding with IRS. So, yeah, Razor Ramon is now a good guy. Uh, September 93 for Wrestle America gives us, has crush muscled Lex Luger out of the WWF title pitcher. Well, no, he didn't. <laughs> Crush ended up going heel. Ooh, this magazine's cut, too. So that's not cool, but I can't find it anywhere else, so it's going to have to do for now. Adam Bomb? Well, yeah, but that's actually the Night Stalker. We got a poster of the British Bulldog uh, power slamming Big Van Vader here. And Sid Vicious. So that's neat. But yeah, I, I gotta get I gotta get a new one. That magazine's wrecked, so that's not cool. Um, September of the wrestling superstars gives us this one again. It's Hulk Hogan and Bruce Beefcake against Sting and Davy Boy Smith for a superstar dream match. Uh, I don't know whose dream match that is. Actually, it's probably be mine. I like all four of those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of cool. Both of these. 
these are like you know four of the top good guys of each organization at the time so why not have a superstar dream match for them right uh overall i think hogan and beefcake would probably beat sting and bulldog that's what i'm just saying um for wrestling uh, 93 rule breaker we get yokozuna on the cover this is the one where it says he flattened hogan crushed hulkamania spit in the face of america and we love it so i talked about this in that other video so we all know that one um and of course september 93 we get for the wwf magazine we get lex luger showing his call to action that's when lex is now um you know becoming uh made in the usa so there's that all right now we got October 93. In October 93, PWI gives us the Sizzling Summer Special, WWF Mid-Year Report. We got Bret Hart as Wrestler of the Half Year. The incredible comeback for Brutus Beefcake, Jimmy Hart, and Hulk Hogan with the title there. Not uh, quite perfect as Mr. Perfect. Huge man, huge impact, Yokozuna, mirror, mirror for the narcissist Lex Luger, and an A for effort for the Intercontinental Champion, the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. Uh, the poster here is of, as you can see here, Marty Jannetty. So and that's definitely AWA, Marty Jannetty here. I don't know where they found that photo at, but it's in, oh, it's in here. And we also get a uh, story on Arn Anderson on the run, Eric Watts taking the force out of the Enforcer. So yeah, there it is, that one. Uh, for October 93 of The Wrestler, we get Ric Flair is back. I don't know where he was, but he, he's, he's been in WCW for a while here, but yes, he's back. Uh, I guess probably because he's going for the NWA world title. Um, Maybe he's champion here of the NWA. I don't know. It could be. I'm not too sure. But, yeah, Ric Flair making the cover. Uh, I guess, no, I guess he's not the champion yet because it says a foolproof way to beat Yokozuna. So, I don't know. It's hard to tell, right, because these magazines come out months ahead of time. So, I don't really know. Um, October 4, uh, 1993 is your SummerSlam Book of Lists. They give us, you know, 88, Andre and Hogan War Explodes, 89, Zeus on the Loose, uh, 88, uh, Elizabeth, and 92, your uh, Savage Warrior World Title Tilts and such. So they give us that in here. That's pretty neat. Uh, I guess a history of SummerSlam up to that time. Um, October 92 for Wrestle America is Lex Luger SummerSlams his way into America's heart. Of course, that picture of Lex there is definitely from WCW. There's no way that's a WWF picture. Let's take a look at the posters, though. We got uh, Heavy Metal Van Hammer. Um, will this open up? Hold on here. Oh, they're doing it differently this time. They're doing it like this. We got Eddie Gilbert and Terry Funk in the chain match. That would be uh, probably ECW Summer Sizzler in uh, in Philadelphia. And the Macho Man Randy Savage in a really weird Photoshop photo. I don't even know where the hell that's from. That's just really, like, look at this. That's just really awkward, right? Um, I think that's it for posters, yeah. Next up is this, October 93, we got the Steiner Brothers as WWF Tag Team Champions. I'm pretty sure, 100% sure, those belts are photoshopped in. They don't even look like, like the belt around Scott doesn't even look like it's around his waist, right? Rick's supposed to be holding that? No. But yes, they were champions. They won them twice that year. They're the tag team of the 90s. Well, it's good to think they thought that. Because Vince kind of shit on him right after that. 1994, the Steiners kind of weren't that big of a deal for the WWF. I mean, when the Quebecers are feuding with, like, men on a mission and not the Steiner brothers at WrestleMania 10, something's wrong with that. Um, November of 93, we get 
a no holds barred special issue it is the wcw mid-year report we got big sid returns wrestler of the half year is uh big van vader a flair for drama the bulldog growls natural excellence with dustin rhodes and uh second half rally for the stinger um what do we got in here for the poster we got I guess are they doing it like this too? Yeah, Rick and Scott Steiner with the tag titles. There they are. The WF tag titles are around their waist. And now they're doing uh, this style. They're not doing the other. Like, look at that. That's just, it's weird, right? How they did it. They changed it up. They just, I don't know. I like how they had it before, but I guess because they lost the, the staples in this one now. No more staples. Um, What else do we got here for November? Ah, yes. Now things have changed. We are now going comic book style. There you are, a smaller book. Bret Hart versus Lex Luger. It's not over yet. And we got Johnny B. Bad still pretty mad. <laughs> and his feud with uh, Max Payne. So yeah, the smaller magazine for all these now. Uh, Inside Wrestling. I showed you this one before. There it is. On the man again, I mean, you were the man. So, yeah. These small little magazines now for November. As well for Russell America. They too get one. The King is Dead. Long live the Burger King. Do they still have the posters in here? Let's find out. They do. At least they got Road Warrior Hawk. Jim Cornette on that side. And the middle here is Sid Vicious uh, beating up Stinger. So, that's something. But yeah, the smaller posters, even with the smaller magazines, that just, that just sucks. Uh, November of uh, 93 gives us Lex Luger on the cover. After his victory at SummerSlam, where to now? That's right, Lex Luger defeated Yokozuna at SummerSlam by countout. Not by pin, fall, or submission. So Lex won the match, but not the WWF title. Yet he's celebrating here with the Steiners, Tatanka, and Randy Savage with the American flag like he did. No wonder fans shit on Lex here because it just... I know Vince was thinking, oh, I'll just rebuild him up and have him win it at WrestleMania. By WrestleMania's time, though, fans wanted Bret Hart again to be champion, and Lex was out. Um, December of 93... We get the PWI 500, and here we see Bret Hart, Yokozuna, Shawn Michaels, Sting, Big Van Vader, Ric Flair, and Lex Luger on the cover. Uh, the poster is a Bret Hart. The Hitman is definitely the poster. And uh, I believe I told you who number one through five were, or four, but I'll do it again just in case. Uh, Bret Hart, Big Van Vader, Shawn Michaels, Sting, Yokozuna. I'll give you the top 10. Ric Flair, 6. Lex Luger, 7. Rick Rude, 8. Kurt Henning, 9. Scott Steiner, 10. So, yeah. PWI. Uh, for, the, um, for the wrestler, we get intimate facts revealed. Everything you always want to know about Lex Luger. And again, this is a WCW photo. They couldn't find a WWF photo, I guess, to use because he, maybe he didn't have the USA tights on at the time, still running the Narcissus look. So there's a bloody Eddie Gilbert, though. That's pretty sweet. So, yeah, they couldn't use that. They used an old WCW photo in his black trunks. Uh, inside Wrestling, the next Hulk Hogan, why Lex Luger will succeed where Warrior and Savage fail. Now, there's Lex with the USA gimmicks at SummerSlam beating up Yokozuna. So, Luger made the cover again. And this was the Luger era, era for WWF, but it didn't last long, of course. Um, Wrestle America gives us finally Vicious versus Vader. This was supposed to happen at Starcade 93. It didn't happen. Sid and Iron got in that knife fight over, in, I think it was over in England or something, but uh, Sid was out, Ric Flair was in, and we had Ric Flair versus Big Van Vader with Flair winning the WCW World title. But the posters in this one, let's take a look, are of, well, they do it different this time, right? 
It's a magazine within a magazine. So now we get um, 30 years of championship excellent, the glorious history of the WWF title. We get Hulk Hogan with the belt there. We get uh, the Hulkster there with that title. And we get um, Bruno San Martino with his title. And Bob Backlund with his title. So that's what Wrestle America turned into. That, by the way, ended up going, uh, this is winter 93. So it went November 93 to winter 93. So now we're starting the quarterly things for Wrestle America. Speaking of quarterly, this is the first time I'm going to show this because I only have one for 1993. It's winter 93 of Wrestling USA. Again, just highlighting um, stories in other magazines. One, two, three, kiddo that was eyebrows on the cover there. But I'm sure there's posters in here. We got Razor Ramon here. We got um, Tony Adams on the back. Uh, the Nasty Boys on the back here. And in the middle, we got Bret Hart and Jerry Lawler. Sid Vicious and one of the Coles, Kent or Keith, I'm not too sure. Dustin Rhodes and Tex Slazinger. And uh, Don Morocco and Tito Santana from ECW. So finally, a Wrestling USA makes the cut. Wrestling 93 returns for winter of 93. This is a comic book style too, of course. So there's that. Uh, it's got Dustin Rhodes, Sting, Bret Hart, and the Steiner Brothers on the cover. So that uh, ends the Wrestling 93 era for 1993. And the last magazine to show here is... December 93 for the WWF, we got Razor Ramon. How long can the bad guy hold the belt? Because he's now Intercontinental Champion. Um, the Steiners, how did they lose the belts? They lost them to the Quebecers and, of course, a Smoky Mountain Blaze. Check out Smoky Mountain Wrestling and its stars. Uh, I guess that's a little help from Vince McMahon to Jim Cornette to get his organization known here. So, yeah, December 93 had the bad guy, Razor Ramon, on the cover. There it is, folks. 1993. And yes, I could have went into better detail. I could have opened up the magazines and checked everything out. But this is already over 40 minutes long. Could you imagine if I did all of that? We'd probably be here an hour and 40 minutes. And I really don't want to be doing that. And I'm sure you don't either. Um, but 1993 was a cool year. I enjoyed it. I thought wrestling... Uh, I liked it. I mean, I, I liked what I was seeing. I was 12 years old, going on 13 at the time. Uh, it was just a fun time. I liked all the wrestlers and all the organizations. Um, you know, like I said, I, it, I, that continued on with 94, 95, 96. So I'm going to do videos on those two eventually. But I wanted to start off with 1993, and I wanted to show that. And I thought, um, I know um, uh, my friend uh, at Pro Wrestling Mags uh, doesn't really do anything past uh, 1993. I don't even know if he has all these magazines. I don't think he has the WWF ones. So I wanted to show them off. I wanted to show um, what I liked and, uh, you know, what it meant to me. I mean, I was a huge wrestling fan at this time. I didn't miss Superstars. I didn't miss Wrestling Challenge. I unfortunately missed Raw because I didn't have cable. If I had cable, I would have watched Raw all the time. But, um, yeah. This is um, this is the first now of many. I'm going to do 1994 eventually, and uh, 95 and 96, and even 97. Because like I said, the new to me the new generation ended in uh, Survivor Series 97 when Bret Hart lost the title to Shawn Michaels and went to WCW. That was the end. That's when the Attitude Era started. Everything changed. And I liked it too. I loved the Attitude Era. Don't get me wrong. I thought the Attitude Era was great. I had the wrestling figures then, and I watched it every week. You know, I uh, by then cable and satellite dishes were were easier to get and have and own at the time. So it was very rare if I missed a Raw. And um, if I did, uh, usually my friend would tape it, and then I'd watch it down the road. So, but yeah, um, this is it. This is 1993 in a nutshell. These are the magazines I have for 93. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and looking at the covers and looking at a peek in some, in some of them inside because I didn't want to go through them all. It would have taken forever.
but um definitely you know if, if anyone out there has any questions about this year let me i know just ask me let me know leave a comment uh like subscribe do all that stuff i have like 54 subscribers now incredible i don't know what i'm doing but i, I must be doing something right to get that many subscribers and people watching these and i appreciate that and i thank you all uh, i hope i'm uh making this entertaining or enjoyable at least for you guys to keep coming back and uh, if I can improve in anything, let me know. Leave a comment, right? Like, I want to make this our channel, not my channel. I want to I want to interact with all you guys. I want to make this like a wrestling podcast, right, where we can talk about wrestling magazines uh, without the podcast because I really didn't know how to do that. And when I found out I can do videos and upload them to YouTube, that was the next best, best thing for me. So I went with that. But uh, it's late. I'm tired. Uh, I wanted to get this done to get it up tomorrow uh, well tomorrow will be today when you see this but technically it's uh it's like 3 30 in the morning right now and i just finished this uh because i work like evenings i work 4 to 12 so my my day like i sleep until noon like i wake up at noon noon's like my my morning so like 4 a.m is like my 11 p.m you know what i mean like when i go to sleep so uh yeah, this is it. So I thought I would do this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. I mean, it was fun to look back at these, at some of these covers, some I'd never seen before uh, because I didn't have them as a kid. Uh, some I remember so, so well. So uh, thanks again for watching, subscribing, liking, comment, commenting, uh, you know, sharing, whatever. Just keep it up. Uh, and uh, let's make this channel grow for all of us. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed 1993, the beginning of the new generation, the beginning of WCW and the NWA splitting apart, and the beginning of ECW getting, you know, some 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 steam, some uh, some some people noticing it. Right? It became it became a became very popular by the end of '93. All right, so with that being said, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.